gel time two. Three, the, the demolding time, that could be one important for you. The molding time means that the material you are using can be taken out from the mold without breaking it or deforming it, but it is not completely set. Okay? So it is hard enough, you can take it off and say, okay, but why it is important for us? Think that, for example, you have to make an exam, you have to make a lot of pieces, but you don't have to spend 100 euros of molds. You have 10 euros to make one single mold. So the mold, if it is occupied by the material, you, can, you have to wait that it hardens because you use it again. The molding time it is important because you know that even the resin or the plaster or the concrete or the gum or the expanded foam, everything you are using, says that in three hours it is completely hardened, but the molding time is 20, 25 minutes, means that you can take it off from 25 minutes and let it stay and rest for the rest of the time for complete setting. Okay, and this means that you can use it after the two, three hours. Post curing, okay, sorry. There is harden, hardening time. Hardening time is comp so-called complete setting, okay? When they say in three hours uh, the materials is ready, in 24 hours you can walk on, on, the, on the floor covered with resin. Uh, you can use the mold after four hours, hardening time, okay? When it's completely set, but it's not completely true, after I will explain you why. And this part, this, sometimes this part there is, sometimes there is not. It is so-called post-curing. Post curing is that some materials uh, can, after the hardening time, they achieve a certain characteristic about flexibility, strength, uh, transparency, and so on. But if you put them in an oven for a certain time, they became even much more resistant. They usually increased a lot their uh, their strength. Um, why I say hardening time is not completely real. It is related to this one. This part may be interesting, uh, much more clear for engineers. Uh, because all the materials, all the materials usually needs uh, close to one week to really complete setup. Okay? If you will work with foam, this is quite important, so remember it very well. It needs one week for complete setup. Why? Because you know that you have two components, atoms, atoms, molecules. You put them together, they start to react. They produce a lot of energy, okay? Uh, this energy leaves uh, some heat, sometimes some light, and uh, the amount of energy needed for complete setting, that means that all the molecules have completely related with the others a complete bending between uh, all the, the, lig the, um, the ligaments uh, are completely set it is more or less about one week. Maybe that sometimes you have no one week and if, if you are like my students uh, usually you have uh, I need it tomorrow maybe <laughs> before <laughs> and you are always in a run. So but you need to have the maximum maximum qualities of your materials, but you don't have time to wait one week. So the amount of energy that is needed by the material to finish, to complete uh, his reaction, uh, you give it with the oven. You put the materials in the oven, you give uh, heat, uh, warm, calore for, uh, for the Italians. It is very different heat from temperature. It's completely different things. There are two completely different things. Um, you give them the energy through heat and the molecules get this energy and say, oh wow, I, I'm full of energy, I can react much faster. As they, pa -pa 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 -pa, as they start to react, they bond the, the ligaments between molecules faster 
and in a certain amount of time, you have it completely set and you don't have to wait for uh, one week. Uh, which way? Allora, you, there, is not a, there is not a rule, uh, there is a kind of general rule, but you have to read the instruction that is always written. Uh, there is a so-called um, to make, explain it to everyone uh, the transition glass temperature I will not explain you what it is because believe me you will kill me after five minutes <laughs> maybe less uh, there is written somewhere the transition glass temperature okay transition it is just the temperature it is always there is written in any any um, in any instruction there is post curing and a certain amount of temperature that you see here you don't know you don't need to know what it is just remember it is uh, we we give it uh, i don't know 90 degrees okay just for make an example and the post curing work like that you start uh, from room temperature Usually it is set at to 20 to 21 degrees, and you go up 10 degrees every hour. Okay, it means 20 every hour. You you rise up the oven 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90 in this case, and then you go down 90, 80, 70 till the room temperature. Okay, this is. Uh, the, the, the rule for the post curing. You, the only thing that you have to, to make is read instruction and find post curing and this temperature if you have to, to do it. Then you can increase 10 degrees each hour until you arrive to 90 yeah, degrees exactly. in this case. And then, and then go back. You go back. Maybe the temperature is not so much. Huh? Maybe you start on 20, they say. You have it in 40 degrees, it's not important. Just take, uh, take the instructor instruction sheets, read it and say, okay, that's why I did it. Uh, for example, for material like a concrete, uh, like uh, plaster, etc., they have a kind of an exception because they are full of water. And uh, the best way to do it, uh, even without uh, looking too much at the boss curing, etc., is the only exception you can make it, uh, just take uh, a microwave. Mm. Maximum, uh, maximum, uh, 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 power. power. Maximum, thank you. Maximum power. You put it inside. You put it inside for five minutes. All the water goes out, became steam. And remember that when you have to take it, it will be super boiling. You take it off, and you make the post curing super, super fast. You set it. It is uh, something that you use it. Concrete uh, and plaster boards, for example are made exactly in that way. They make, that's why they can produce it so fast. Because you just put it in a, in a microwave and uh, you have done. So, uh, this is, those are the five things that you have to learn. This is kind of Bible, okay? Five commands. There are, if you remember these ones, you will find in every technical sheet all over the world about all over any kind of material you will find. Even about wood, we have it. Because you can make it these things also with wood. May I erase? Okay. That's why I was telling about the time. Time is very important because you see that all these things are related to time. They give you time of working, okay? If you follow the, the rules, uh, you will have no, have no problem at all. If you do it by yourself, uh, you can do it. But uh, I have problems and I made this work by 35 years, okay? 
and still I have surprises and I sometimes I, I say, okay, I suppose it will happen this way. Not, not always, <laughs> sometimes I have big problems, okay? Um, especially you will work uh, probably, uh, your teachers <coughs> with expanded materials, like those ones, okay? This is a polyurethane, classical polyurethane. Materials, expanded materials, you must think that there are a lot of other things involved in using these materials. Pressure. If someone became bigger, there is someone that inflated. Air, chemicals, not important. It makes some kind of pressure. So if you use this kind of material in a closed mold, it will explode. Because you think, okay, but it's not so strong, this thing. Okay, but when it expands, it expands with five, six atmospheres when it's very small one. If not, it can achieve uh, 20, 25 atmospheres. And uh, for design <coughs> especially, I, I don't know if you don't know, if you, if you already know, tell me and I will stop it immediately. If not, remember that if you make a square <coughs> of 10 centimeters, okay, 10 per 10 is 100 centimeter squares. If you put raising normal, no problem. If you put something that expands, expand maybe five atmospheres for every single centimeter square. So 100 per five, it is 500, in this case, kilos. On, on a little piece like that, you have 500 kilos of pressure. If you have a mold, this is six sides, this is per six. It is 3,000 kilos of pressure inside of your molds. You got it? It usually you don't have a mold, you have a muffin at the end. Okay? Because it becomes you cannot control it. Okay? So when you work, when you start working with this kind of material, remember, first it can be dangerous. Because sometimes the reaction is so explosive that really the, the mold can explode. So always keep attention when you work with this kind of material because these nice things about pressure. And there is another thing when you work with materials that is heat. Because I have my A plus B material, okay? Could be plaster and water, could be resin and reaction, could be silicon A, and silicon hardens, it's not important, okay? You put together two materials. These two materials, to become the hardened material, need uh, some energy, okay? The energy that is produced <coughs> during the reaction usually becomes heat. With some materials, like silicon, the heat, uh, it is just three, four degrees. You have no problem. You can put 1,000 kilos and you put the hand on it and nothing happens. After, I will, I will make you try with a fast resin what's happened. But if we gave 100 to the total amount of energy that I need uh, to make a material to become stiff, to become hard, if I give them very uh, low time, temperature will be higher. The much time I give to the material for the reaction, temperature will be lower, okay? So remember, when I you say, oh wow, I need, uh, I need so far, please give me the material the fastest you have, uh, you will have the problem that the material, the faster it is, the higher will be the temperature. So if you don't use, for example, 
a, a, a mold of the right in the, of the right nature, you will melt it. Or imagine that you put material for make a mold over a plastic original that takes you hours and hours and hours of good work and you will melt it. Because the reaction, it is incredibly heat. Sometimes the heat is too much and the resin and the other material can take fire. So the, those are not toys, okay? Those are chemical materials and they have to be treated with a lot of attention. So remember that in any kind of reaction when there is transformation from liquid to solid to solid to air to anything or reverse, you release energy. And 95% of this energy is heat. And heat burns and gives you a lot of pain. Believe me, I, I know it very well. Okay, remember this other thing. So we talk about time, we talk about pressure, we talk about heat. Okay? Uh, why I have gloves? You say, oh wow, he will talk about security. Yes, you know everything about security. Of course. And everybody says, oh, okay, but I don't need it. I will use it only once, etc. Believe me, one could be enough. This thing is poly <laughs> polyurethane. But polyurethane is made by polyol and isochanate. Chanate, chanurate, chanuro for the Italians. Okay? This is not poison, more. If a drop of this one get in your mouth and will go in your stomach, it happens to me because I was putting something and a drop comes to me and uh, you know when you make lipstick, uh, usually I don't use a lipstick, eh? but I know how it is <laughs> because I work in fashion a lot, yes, you see? And I eat one drop and I think I have vomit the milk when I was born, okay? If it was much more than a drop, I will be not here. Because the reaction inside of the stomach with the acid of the stomach make your stomach explode. Okay? So pay attention when you work with any of these materials. Always. Okay? And always wear gloves when you work with them. Silicon not. Silicon you can make everything, you can even drink it. It enters, it exits. <laughs> In the same way, clean, so also, etc. But all the other materials, believe me, you have to protect yourself. Uh, epoxy, I, by the way, I didn't bring here epoxy. I will talk about it. I will, didn't bring here because it is very slow reaction material, 6, 12 hours, 14 hours. So it is absolutely useless that I show you. Oh, this is epoxy, you see, like, okay, so what? Nothing. Uh, but epoxy, to become hardened, needs a, a, a mina. Uh, if some one of you have uh, allergy to pollens, uh, etc., I, I think a lot of you, like me, you take antihistaminic, antihistaminic, and it is made by aminic resin that make it becomes hard resin. So, if you are allergy with pollen, don't be, don't worry, you will react immediately couple of times you use it and you will start to, to scratch yourself. If you are not, but you continue to use it with your bare hands for a lot of time, for sure, you will, uh, you have 90% of possibilities uh, to become allergic to this material. And the, the problem is that this material, you will find it everywhere, everywhere. And it became, it, it is so hard that sometimes if you find it in paintings, for example, you cannot even enter in it because you start to scratch yourself. It's not nice. So always protect yourself. Always protect your, uh, your eyes. Okay? It is the, the most important truth, really. You can, you, you can do as you, as you want, but suggestion, do it. Okay? It, it's not just to say, oh, okay, because it, I'm, I'm serious. It, it, it would be very dangerous. Okay? So time, pressure, heat, poison materials. Say, I know that you are saying, okay, why the hell you are talking about all these <laughs> fucking materials that we, we will never use because they are too dangerous because you have no other choice. 
you to a lot of people you know when you come in like in, in places like Polytechnic, etc., you can be in contact with super carbon fiber, uh, super new materials. These are fantastic, but you will never use it because they're too expensive because they need super special machinery to be used. You, you cannot uh, achieve the knowledge for using these materials because they work for super high pressure. The plastic, the plastic to make this thing, okay, it goes uh, uh, 150 tons of pressure to be inject, injected. And the mold are made of steel. Of course, this one, it is three grams of plastic it cost one cent but the machine to make it cost million euros a very small very very small uh, steel mold uh, just simple one for for making for example uh, to make a, one of these okay it is a very simple mold one and two that's all uh, for four of this, a mold like that can cost you, just to give you an example, it is around 70,000 to 100,000 euros. And this is injected 300,000 tons of pressure. So this costs nothing but the machine. That's why when you, when you say, okay, but it's normal plastic. No, it's not normal plastic. It's something that you have to to keep very well in mind how you will work it, okay? This is important uh, for designers because if you, if you are much more engineer, you think much more about these things. A problem that you have in design that you think, oh wow, I made this thing, it is so fantastic, so nice, so beautiful, etc. Then you come to people like me that make prototypes, etc. And, and you say, oh wow, very nice, it cannot be made. <laughs> but I did it with the 3D machine, etc. Yes, of course, 3D machine. It takes seven hours to make a piece like that. You, you, you have to sell one eye to pay it, probably. And you can make it only that way, only with the 3D machine. Because in normal production, you cannot do it. That's, that's why it is important that you have some kind of experience with this kind of material, with this kind of mold, because you will understand which are the problem of production. Because the same problems that you have it in a little scale, you will have it multiplied for thousand when you go in real production. Okay? They will say, nice design, beautiful. We will never product. We will make this one that is ugly, but I can make it. Okay, that's why it is important for you to learn something about it. For about more, so we, we should need a really, <laughs> I think a complete course because it's not something that I, I can teach you in just a few hours. But it is important that you learn the relation between the material you choose to use and the way you will use it for the production, okay? This kind of material, are used because they can simulate very well the final product that you will have in normal production. Uh, resins, usually you will use three resins. There are a bunch. I, I, can, I can talk <coughs> for 10 minutes without repeating the same name of resins. There are a bunch, okay? You, you need more, usually three. Polyurethane. Epoxy and acrylic. By the way, it is you you find them everywhere. You work with them even if you don't know it. Especially girls. Did you put enamel on your nails? It is acrylic resin. Some one of you make a her, for example, with the red hair, you change, I think it is not your natural color, even if it's, it's, it's suited to you very well, but I think it's not your natural one. It is raisin. That's the, it is a raisin that makes the color. If someone of you have, um, how is the name, cavities, 
cavity, eh? Sure. Ca cavities in the tears, you know that they put kind of white pasta and with UV it becomes hardened. It is acrylic resin. Everything you have in your, if you have a fake teeth, is acrylic resin. You have resin, we use it resin every day without knowing it, okay? We just call it in, in some different ways, but it is, you find it everywhere. Polyurethane, if you have a car, if you have a motorcycle, if you have a bicycle, there is resin everywhere. All the seats are made in polyurethane. The inside of the car, 95% are made in polyurethane. So you, you are, in reality, we are surrounded by resins, but we don't know it. And they are the same resins. The only difference with the one that you can use is that those are made to be used by hand, and those are made for use by industrial. The real difference, they are the same product usually, the real difference is time. You can make it in one hour, one hour for the industry time, it is important. They don't even sink in, they sink in seconds. If, if they can make it in less than one second, the product, they are happy because for them, it's money. Every second is money. For us, no. We just have to make prototypes, we just have to make it, we just have to understand how it works. So we don't have this problem. Your time problem is, will I, will I will be in time for the exam, okay? <laughs> but they have exam every second, that's the problem. Epoxy, epoxy is something that you find everywhere because it is used for, because it is a kind of natural glue, so it uses it everywhere. There is also another one, polyester. Polyester you know it very well, pile, uh, jackets, lycra, uh, we, we wear polyester and we find it everywhere. But uh, you, will f you can find, if you look for resin in your life, etc., you can find it very easy. You can buy it very easy, and it is incredibly cheap, and it is super performing. Polyester have, has all the qualities of this resin together, and it's super cheap. But I suggest you not to use it, because the indication for cancer for this material on a scale of one to 10 is 11, <laughs> okay? If you work a lot with polyester, the question is not, uh, oh, maybe I can have cancer working with it. No, the, uh, the question is when you will have it. No way. This is something that can be used really only, only, only by professional, okay? Even if someone say, but you can take it, it's not true, it's just a bad smell. The bad smell kills you. Not today, not tomorrow, but can kill you. Uh, it is a smell that maybe you have, you have seen, uh, you have felt, uh, um, huh. when, when, you, when you go where they working with boats, large boats, uh, you, can, you, can, you can understand that you are close to them since kilometers because it is a kind of very strong, Pointing, uh, pointing to your nose, and uh, you can you can you can feel it also if you go in uh, I don't know how how they call it carrozzeria in English, eh? where you know when, when you bump the car and you go in the places that they remake the car garage. brand new garage garage the, the one that make the, in the garage they use a kind of stucco that is strongly that very bad smell it is polyester. They use it without mask, with hand, etc. Don't do it. Okay? So, polyester is fantastic, but it's not for us. You can use these ones, are the ones that you use everywhere. Polyurethane, epoxy, acrylic, which is the biggest difference. Polyurethane, it is so called mimetic material. Mimetic because the polyurethane, with the polyurethane you can make imitation of every plastic. Every kind of plastic you can, be, can be imitated by polyurethane. Why? It's very easy. These materials, when you make the classical A plus B, okay, B is just a hardener, okay? 
<coughs> so epoxy is <coughs> epoxy from liquid you put harden and became uh, epoxy hard like a rock uh, transparent translucent not important it came it you it helps only to to change the state of the matter from liquid to solid okay but it is epoxy at the beginning it is epoxy at the end just change it consist consistency uh, acrylic is the same acrylic the one when you make the the enamel on your on your on your fingers there is a solvent acetone usually you leave it to your fingers it goes and it becomes hard okay but it, it is acrylic resin at the beginning and it is acrylic resin <coughs> at the end okay polyurethane is the only one that is very different because uh, as i told you is made by I lost the uh, cancellino. Polyurethane is made by, as I told you before, poly oil plus iso isocyanate. Okay. Those are two different materials. When you mix them together, then you have polyurethane. So, meanwhile, the other materials, plaster, resin, uh, acrylic, etc., they are the same from the end to the beginning, to the, end, to the beginning to the end. Polyurethane is one material called polyol plus another material called isocyanate they mix together and then you have polyurethane that is a different material for this one okay so it is easy to understand that if you change if you have the same isocyanate and you change the polyol you can have completely different material if you have the same polyol and you change isocyanate you can have different materials and this material can change um, can change uh, his um, uh, qualities, uh, not always, but it, they are made for this. Uh, changing for uh, usually, for example, the relation. Imagine you have sometimes 100, 100, and you achieve a certain material. You leave this one 100, and you make this one 50 percent, and you you achieve different characteristic, more uh, more bendable. For example. This one and those one are the same. We just change it proportion. And you see completely different. Okay. That's why those materials are so important. Polyurethane, you find it everywhere. By the way, usually it is considered the, uh, the fastest of the material that we can work with. Usually it reacts uh, in minutes, maybe one hour, two hours, three hours, when it's very, very slow. Usually the pace of reaction is incredibly fast. In 20 minutes you have your material, okay? So that, that's why it is used so much. So, clear? Two different material give you a certain material. That's why it's mimetic because you can you can have transparent, you can have stiff, you can have bendable. Just changing it, it means uh, that is the, one of the cheapest because they produce uh, so many kinds, so many types, and it uses so much. The production is so wide uh, that you can fight for very cheap. And uh, except for the fact that isocyanate can kill you, it doesn't have a. Uh, other big uh, issues. Just take a little bit of attention. And 90% of expanded material are made by polyurethane. Okay? Uh, which is the best way to, uh, to make expand water? Because water with polyol and isocyanate uh, make a reaction, uh, makes free gases, and pfft, Make it, make it expand. 90% of the so-called uh, 
biological, green, uh, expand uh, material, uh, blah, 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 etc., are water. <coughs> they just put some water in the resin and it expands. Before they make it with solvents, kind of special solvents, kind of special expanding materials, <coughs> they work far better than these ones. But you know that now we are very green, very ecological, very blah, 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 etc. So we take off that one, if we put water, and the result is that before we give, uh, when, when I sell something years ago, I say, okay, I give you warranty for 20 years. Now I give you one year. Because I know what will happen after one year. Okay, they will destroy themselves. They lost. But it is something very important for you to, to remember. When, when you work with prototypes, you don't, you don't care about it. When you have to make sense in that last, think about it, especially when you go in production. Okay? Uh, polyurethane, expanded polyurethane, I told you, have the little problem of expanding with super, super pressure inside. Okay? So when you use it, uh, there are no, not a lot of tricks. The best one is that you make molds open like that. You give some part that can expand freely and put out some of the pressure, unless you want to spend a lot of time making a super, super, super strong uh, mold. Okay? It is not so difficult to make it, but it, it requires time, requires money, etc. So you, you can have some problem in production. Uh, we, you, can, you can think how to cho if choose materials that self-expand uh, or try to use materials uh, like, for example, like, like your teacher did. You can make something like that uh, and then work on it uh, to achieve the final result. Usually, maybe it's not the most beautiful result that you can have, uh, but for sure it is the easiest, okay? Unless you have real, you, you really know how to make molds. Hmm? Uh, other thing, remember that this material react, as I told you, expand with water. It means that if you make your mold uh, <coughs> two days that is raining, and when it's very hot outside and very dry, you will achieve completely different results. It will expand much more. If I put resin now, that we are a lot of people, we make a lot of humidity with our breath here, it will expand much more than if I was alone. If I was alone, it will expand less. With all this humidity, it fill it, and it started to react more and expand more. So you have to think. If you are making your mold in a, in a rainy day, pay attention that it's better to dry it before, or you will have expanded and uncontrolled <coughs> expansion, okay? Um, something else are important about, except this one, there are no, not other big issues. Pressure, and you cannot control it. it a, a good idea when you make, when you use these things is that uh, you take uh, a needle, a big needle, on the material you are making and make a lot of holes. So the inside gases that are not completely set, that are trapped inside, can go out uh, and you help it to, to, to set. And usually, usually it's better to let it set uh, for at least two, three days before start to using it. So if you, are, uh, if you go with your caliper and you go and take your measure, oh wow, it is perfect, uh, and you measure it after three days, uh, you will be a little bit disappointed because believe me, it will be never like the first time. It will continue changes for three, four days. What's happened with the, with the other glass? Yeah. <coughs> it was made in the same day, uh, two different mixers, uh, I think, no? Yeah. <laughs> It is, you see, it can, it, it can happen very, also this one, now it is much more free because, you see, it, there is a little bit of play because it starts uh, to retract. All the resins, all the resins have a retraction. So, usually, 
every, every material where it changed its state from liquid to solid lost something in dimension. There is only one material, no, two materials that don't do it, water and plastic. You know that water, when became uh, when became uh, ice, it doesn't shrink, it expands. Plaster expands. And some ceramics that are kind, kind of a plaster expands. No, the, the funny thing is that even physics, there are a lot of theories about <coughs> it, but no physics knows exactly why it happens. There are a lot of theories, but no one knows. But you have to know that it happens, no matter what is the theory behind it. You just remember, okay? When you work with ceramics, plasters of water, or low temperatures, it expands. All the other materials shrinks, okay? It means that when you make your project, if you have to, to have a special measure, remember that it's better for you to make a test on the material, because if you need uh, 11 millimeters, maybe you have 11, 10 millimeters, and eight tenths after some days, okay? Usually in the, in the technical sheets, uh, it is written how much is the shrinkage. But remember that it is a shrinkage calculated in a lab with uh, 21 degrees, uh, with 70% uh, of humidity, etc. You will never work in the same situation. So it can be less, can be more. The best way is try, okay? Uh, dunque, now I suggest uh, to make uh, five, sec five minutes of stops and then we go out and we, we, we continue, okay? If not, I will lost you. Thank okay. you.